Hallo, ik film de altijd draaiexpoos. In this Circuits of the Past video, Herman shows you the remains of the first version of the Hockenheim ring, the so-called Dreiecksgers, which is German, apparently, for triangular track, and likely well beyond my pronunciation skills. Come on, Herman, show us how it's done. Dreiecksgers. Herman, quietly in the background, becoming the Alexa of motorsport that we frankly all deserve. Thank you very much. <laughs> Many fans will miss the old Hockenheim layout, with its long straights and chicanes in the woods. But did you know that that was actually the third version of the Hockenheim circuit? We now drive the very first ever version, which is actually the real old Hockenheim ring. We start on the straight between the Oost curve and the Senna chicane. You may remember those corners from the old days. However, we're now going to drive in the opposite direction than we're used to, and that's because the original diving direction was anti-clockwise. Here you see a white line that marks the exit from the former Oost curve. This is also where we leave the common part of circuit between all three versions of Hockenheim. We're now 100% on the old version of the Hockenheim circuit. By the way, the guy named Herman is Herman Lischmeier, the founder of the Circuits of the Past website and YouTube channel. He's actually Dutch, but speaks German too, <laughs> as you'll hear later on in the video. My name's Simon Smith. I can barely speak English, but I do do the voiceovers for Circuits of the Past videos. I have a gaming channel on YouTube called High Plane Games if you're interested. Herman also filmed this onboard footage. Unfortunately, there's a bit of a greasy substance on the windshield that smeared even more when he polished it. So we're sorry for the marks that you'll see, but it couldn't be helped. Hashtag just off-roading things. Before I start talking about the history of the Hockenheim circuit, we first of all have a myth to bust. Many sources will tell you that Hockenheim was built in the 1930s as a test track for Mercedes. Lazy reporters like to parrot each other, because this is absolutely not true. It's one of the urban whiffs and misconceptions that has constantly been around in motorsport for years. We made a funny top 10 about it. The link of that video will now appear, just like magic, in the top right of your screens. Hockenheim started in 1932 as a street circuit. It was an initiative from Ernst Christ, an assistant timekeeper and motorsport fan sure we'd all be friends. In 1930 he had come up with the idea to open a circuit in his hometown of Hockenheim. For this idea he got the support of Mayor Philipp Klien and the German Motorsport Association who promised to organise races on the circuit. They extended two public roads so that a triangle trial could be created. Because there wasn't enough money for the surface of the extensions, the first motorcycle race on the 29th of May 1932 was held on partly unpaved track. Ouch. <laughs> I'd have bought a saddle cushion. As we said, the original Hockenheim circuit was driven anti-clockwise. Just like later versions, it was characterised by its long straights. Hockenheim was always designed to be a true high-speed circuit. This very first version was modified for the first time in 1938, when a new section was built to cut off the section we're at now. That was because this section of track ran through the village of Oftersheim. This new part was the section with the famous Oost curve. The track had now got its famous stretched oval shape that would exist until its 2002 reconstruction. Also in this version, the driving direction was anti-clockwise. Here, Herman has to make a detour because the current main road follows another trajectory. Now we enter the village of Oftersheim. Not long after this section was cut off by the street circuit, World War II broke out in 1939 and motor racing stopped. 
During the war, the surface was badly damaged because Allied forces drove their tanks on the roads that formed the circuit. When the surface was repaired, it was renamed to the Hockenheim Ring, and the first post-race wars in Germany were held there in May 11, 1947. In the 1960s, a new highway was planned. It would cut off the section through the village of Hockenheim, which we'll see later. To keep the track operational, a new reconstruction was necessary. A new section was designed by Dutchman John Hugenholtz, who designed other circuits such as the excellent Suzuka in Japan, Harama in Spain, and the Los Nivelle circuit in Belgium. Inspired by the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, he designed a stadium section named Motodrome, in English, Motor Stadium. In 1964, the construction of the Motodrome started, and in 1966, it was open for business. From that moment on, the Hockenheim Ring was a full, permanent racetrack. They also changed the driving direction from anti-clockwise to clockwise. The characteristics for this version of Hockenheim was the contrast between the long, lonely straights through the woods and that twisty end section in the crowd-packed stadium. On the 7th of April 1968, it was a sad day in the history of the Hockenheim Ring. On this day, the legendary two-time Formula One champion Jim Clark lost his life here on one of the long straights during a Formula Two race. For many people, Hockenheim will forever be associated with this tragedy. So here, Herman couldn't drive any further because this is a bicycle path, and he had no bicycle in his car. A transformer, today Herman is not. At the end of this vertical path, the dry excas connected to the later versions of the old Hockenheim. A part of it was demolished during the 2002 reconstruction, but there's also a small part of the original track still operational in the Motodrome, and it's between turns one and two. We continue our ride on the other side of the Autobahn, and I'll finish off my story on the old Hockenheim. In 1970, two chicanes were built halfway along both of the long straights to enhance safety. Because of safety problems at the Nürburgring, the German Formula 1 Grand Prix was held that year at Hockenheim for the very first time. This race was won by Jochen Rindt, who then died in a crash at Monza later that year, and became the only posthumous world champion. The next year, Formula 1 returned to the Nürburgring, but after the grave accident from Niki Lauda in 1976, the Nürburgring was found too dangerous, and so the German Grand Prix came back to Hockenheim. From 1977 through to 2006, the German Grand Prix settled down at Hockenheim, all except for 1985 when there was no German Grand Prix at all. From 2007 through to 2014, the Grand Prix alternated between Hockenheim and the Nürburgring. In 1982, a third chicane was built at the Ostkurve. By the way, if you want to support Circuits of the Past to keep memories alive of these lost racetracks, you can now join us on Patreon, and your name will appear in the videos. You can also make a single tip or donations to paypal.me forward slash circuits of the past. With the popularity of Michael Schumacher in the 1990s and the opening of the new Lausitz ring, circuit bosses feared for the loss of the Grand Prix, so a plan was put in place to modernise the track. Nope, it wasn't Ecclestone, nor the FIA who required a reconstruction of Hockenheim. The initiative came from the circuit owners themselves. A new section, designed by Hermann Tilke, was built. To compensate for the felled trees, the old track was demolished so that new trees could be planted, and the new track opened in 2002. However, the reconstruction was a financial disaster that brought Hockenheim Ring back to the brink of bankruptcy. Thanks to government intervention, the track could be saved from downfall, but with the taxpayer's money, of course. That's how the Hockenheim circuit changed in 70 years from a simple high-speed street circuit into a modern-day Formula One circuit. Here on the left is a cemetery of the village of Hockenheim, and in front of us is a camping site. Do you think they'll let Herman through?
Hallo, ik film me altijd draaiexpo's. Een hakken hij. Ik film uh, de ganse oude strekken, de draaiexpo's. Ja. De, de backfoot hier in. Dan het zo. Maar ik heb het dus uh, privaat uh, gelende zeg. Dat is in de hier. Ja, 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 oké. Okay. Ik, ik draai en dan. Uh, So now we have proof that Herman can speak in German, but sadly they wouldn't let him through. So we couldn't film the last 200 meters of the original Hockenheim layout. Boo! <laughs> Not to fear though, we'll take to Google Earth to see the last part. Here you can see the last part on the camping site. It's now cut off by the autobahn, and on the other side of the autobahn is the current Hockenheim ring. The original track ran where the drag strip is now. You probably remember this part from the crazy rain affected 2019 German Grand Prix. I'll get my ice skates ready so I can do a triple salco flat onto my bum. It follows the old straight between the Senna chicane and the entry to the Autodrom, but in the other direction. This is also where the start finish was, so we can finish our lap right here. If you want to know more about the history of the Hockenheim Ring, please read the article on the website www.circuitsofthepast.com. There you can download a free ebook about seven abandoned racetracks that you can visit legally, so you don't have to talk with the camping bosses. For now though, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click on that notification bell so that you don't miss out on the next video from another Circuit from the Past.